हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू के के यूमन एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी वीडियोस अ प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर यू विल गेट इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव फैक्ट्स अबाउट ह्यूमन एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टू पाथवेज ऑफ कोएगुलेशन कैस्केड दैट इज इंट्रेंसिक पाथवे एंड एक्सट्रेंसिक पाथवे बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस वीडियो मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव सीन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो You can get the video link in this top i button as well as in the description below. In first part we have discussed two processes that is vascular spasm when injury occurs vessel walls constrict causing reduced blood flow to the site of injury and the platelet plug formation where platelets gets aggregate to the site of injury. they stick together acting as a plug these two processes are categorized into primary hemostasis see platelets alone are not enough to secure the damage in the vessel wall here we need a clot to prevent excessive blood loss at the site of injury okay so this clotting cascade occurs through two separate pathways that interact these pathways are intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway these processes are often considered as a part of secondary hemostasis see both the pathways leads to the formation of prothrombin activator Let's start with intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is longer and more intricate pathway. This is triggered by internal damage to the vessel wall. This pathway is activated by chemicals, broken collagen, exposed endothelium and platelets. Factor 12 comes in contact with negatively charged collagen on the damaged endothelium. it gets activated to factor 12a so when factor number 12a is activated it acts upon the factor number 11 and causes its activation to 11a this 11a acts upon factor number 9 and forms the factor number 9a these reactions require some cofactors such as high molecular weight kininogens and calcium ions in the presence of factor number 8a which is derived from factor number 8 this activated factor number 9 combines with calcium ions and causes the activation of factor number 10 to factor number 10a this activated factor number 10a combine with factor 5 and calcium ions to form prothrombin activator this is all about the intrinsic pathway remember the product of intrinsic pathway that is prothrombin activator i have already told you that both the pathways lead to the formation of prothrombin activator let's talk about extrinsic pathway it is triggered by external trauma this trauma can be trauma to the wall itself or can be to the extracellular tissue this tissue trauma causes the release of tissue factor also known as tissue thromboplastin this tissue factor causes conversion of factor number 7 to activated factor number 7a okay and then the tissue factor combine with activated factor number 7a in presence of calcium ions and causes the conversion of factor number 10 to activated factor number 10a the next step is similar to that of intrinsic pathway that is activated 10a factor combine with factor 5 and calcium ions to form prothrombin activator okay 
so this is all about the extrinsic pathway it is smaller than that of intrinsic pathway see as we saw both the pathways leads to the formation of activated factor 10a that forms prothrombin activator and from here the pathway of clot formation is common that is in presence of calcium ions this prothrombin activator converts prothrombin into thrombin and when sufficient quantity of thrombin is formed in the blood it leads to the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin see over here these fibrins are monomers and they cannot form a stable clot so in presence of calcium ions and fibrin stabilizing factor which is nothing but factor number 13 acts on them and converts them into fibrin polymers by formation of covalent bonds in fibrin monomers and eventually they lead to the formation of clot by attracting lots of phospholipids platelets and other substances that are there to them and forms a stable clot here comes the summary of this video we have discussed the coagulation cascade which involves intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway these both pathways leads to the formation of prothrombin activator which converts prothrombin to thrombin and sufficient amount of thrombin in blood converts fibrinogen into fibrin these fibrins are monomers and they cannot form a stable clot so in presence of calcium ions factor number 13 adds on them and converts them into fibrin polymers and eventually they lead to the formation of clot by attracting lots of phospholipids platelets and other substances that are there to them and forms a stable clot this is all about the extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway that are categorized into secondary hemostasis this results in the formation of stable clot and hence excessive blood loss is prevented hope you will find this video informative if you like this video then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon do like comment and share this video for more update join the forum and group visit my facebook page for more information i have provided the link in description below have a happy learning